Greetings in the name of Yahweh HaMashiach. At the end of today's broadcast, I'll have a mailing address, phone number, and website. Please stay tuned. Greetings in the name of Yahweh, the only name given among men, whereby we must be saved. And we do appreciate each and every one of you who has taken your time tuning in this program. We're going to go over to the book of Daniel 8.25, what we have been reading the last several weeks. Now, we're going to be talking about the end of the age. Or the King James will say, the end of the world. It's a Hebrew word called Kates Ha'olam. And we're going to be talking about this here in just a little bit. Of course, we're going to be talking about it now. But we're going to go to the verse here in just a little bit to where it's used. In the book of Daniel 8.25, we find that what we have been studying in the second chapter, the seventh chapter, and also the eighth chapter, what we're finishing up right now. We find in both or in, or in all three of those chapters, it shows the coming of Yahweh. And it shows the anti-Mashiach being conquered. And it also shows the end of the world. A lot of people will say the end of the age. So here in Daniel 8.25 it says, And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. And by peace shall destroy many. And he shall also stand up against the prince of princes. And he shall be broken without hand. Now, I would like to real quick go over to the book of Matthew 24 and verse 3. Now, first of all, if this is the first time you've tuned into this program, we teach that there's only one true name. And that true name never was, never was Jesus, which was never in the original 1611 King James Bible. And the name that was in the the original 1611 King James Bible was I-E-S-U-S, which would be the 1611 King James Bible. So you would have Jesus in 1769, what's known as the Red Letter Edition, and that's what we're reading out of. But in the original 1611, it was not in there. It was a Greek Latin word known as I-E-S-U-S. Then it goes back to the I-E-S-O-U-S. Neither was the Messiah's name Yeshua or Yahushua. He come in his father's name. This is where you find that John 
are in what you would call First John talks about the Antichrist and also the Antichrist. And these spirits are the spirit of anti-Messiah, or as the King James would say, anti-Christ. So when you hear me say the word anti-Messiah or the word anti-Mashiach, which is the Hebrew form of it, but coming out of the Hebrew, it would be known as anti-Messiah. Of course, the King James is going to use the word anti-Christ. A lot of times I have to just about go through this so people can understand where we're coming from. But he talks about this anti-Mashiach, what is known in Hebrew as Sotain HaMashiach, means against the Messiah, against the anointed. So, we need to really understand this because the day and age we're living in now, the hour that we're in now, why have we come to a place that the church is not preaching the truth on the name? How has all of this taken place? Why is it that the name of Jesus is being exalted? It never was in the early assembly. How it come about is this. If you go do any studying, you will find that by 325 A.D., they begin to change baptism from a name. Then this is how the titles Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come in and also how the Trinitarian doctrine come in. So you have to really understand how all this taking place. But when you go to what we've been reading in the book of Daniel, the second chapter, the seventh chapter, and the eighth chapter, you find the same system and you find the anti Messiah spirit in it from the beginning to the end of it. And you will also find that you will find the one will be destroyed at the end time or what you would call the end of the world. Now when you say the end of the world or an end of an age because when you deal with the word world you would think well the world has come to an end. But a lot of times when you're looking up stuff and, and, and searching it out and find out about the timing of the world, there's a difference between an age and the world being destroyed at the very end. That would mean over with. We understand that when the Messiah comes back, the world is not going to be totally destroyed. Now, we understand he's going to set him up a kingdom. But this kingdom 
after a millennium kingdom has come in, this thing's going to start completely over with a new heaven and a new earth. So a lot of times you have to understand how things are being used to understand when he talks about the end of the world. So here in Matthew 24, 3, it says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? So you have to a lot of times understand the word world in Hebrew is a Hebrew word. In matter of fact, the Greek is taken from this word called olam. Is where it's taken from. When this world, or when this word is used. This world, this word olam in Hebrew is a Hebrew word called Olam, which means like a long duration. It can be used forever and ever or everlasting or evermore potential. potential. Or it can be used as old or ancient world. It's according to how it's used. Or ever, it is again, the word is used sometimes as everlasting. But a lot of times it's used dealing with the word for world because it's really getting into a lot of stuff. So you have to really truthfully understand the word olam from where the Greek is taking, uh, bringing this from. In some translations, it says it substitutes always for in the world. The world, I mean, this is how it's used a lot of different places when you find this. Matter of fact, let me give you an example. This word, olam that we find in the book of Matthew now. In the book of Matthew 4, 43, where he says, the end of the world. The Greek uses this word now. The word end is a Hebrew word called kates. And the word world is the word haolam, meaning the world. Now, over in the book of Psalms, 73, 12. Psalms 73, 12 says, Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. The word world is the same Hebrew word called olam. They're using the word world and using the Hebrew word olam. So a lot of times you really have to understand the way it's being used. Matter of fact, in the book of Ecclesiastes. 
3.11 says, He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he hath set the world in their heart so that no one can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning of the world. The word again is the word for world. W-O-R-D. W-O-R-L-D. It's the same Hebrew word meaning olam. So a lot of times you can under, you have to understand how this word is being used. So here in the book of Matthew then, we know that he is talking about his coming and the end of the world. Now, when you talk about the end of the world, are we talking about the end of the world as if you go outside and look at it? Or is it as you go out and look at as how it is now and being operated now? How the government is controlling the world today. So, a lot of times you really have to understand how this is actually being used. So then, in the book of Matthew, where we were just reading, we know that in the book of Matthew, that they were asking about his coming. And the sign or the be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world. We understand that the sign of his coming and the end of the world are two different things here. When the Messiah comes back, we find that he's going to destroy something. And this is why when you go to the book of Ma- when you go to the book of Daniel in the second chapter, the seventh chapter, and the eighth chapter, you find that those dreams and those visions, part of them happen in BC, and, and some of it will happen in A.D., even in the future tense of us. Because we know... See, a lot of times, books, and I've been saying this over and over, books, people will write books, people will try to put these prophecies that fits in the end time, try to fit them in B.C., In the time of Antiochus, it won't fit. It won't fit in the time of Titus. Because these are prophecies that are talking about the coming of Yahweh. When the Messiah in the book of Matthew 24, It was something that he had said in verse in in Matthew twenty four and one that made them ask these questions, and we will deal with this later on. But we're talking about the end of the world, or as some would say, or as some would say, the end of the age. So going back over real quick to the book of Daniel 8.25. Now I'm going to read this again. I want, I want you to look at something 
Because we know that the one it's talking about here in Matthew, I mean in, in Daniel 8.25 is talking about the one that magnifies himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many. And this same one, he shall stand up against the prince of princes. And he shall be broken without hand. Now this same one that's going to stand up against the princes, the prince of princes has to be somebody that's here when the prince of princes comes back. Now real quick, I want to go over to the book of Second Thessalonians. I've really been wanting to go to Second Thessalonians for a long time. But I wanted to cover a lot of this stuff in the book of Daniel. That if you've been reading along with us and studying along with us, you would have to agree that some of these prophecies or you'd have to disagree with what Daniel said. That in Daniel's time, in B.C., and when Nebuchadnezzar, the creator of heaven and earth, Yahweh Almighty, dealt with Nebuchadnezzar, Yahweh Almighty set Nebuchadnezzar up and give him his authority. And then showed Nebuchadnezzar the kingdom. But it took Daniel to interpret what Nebuchadnezzar seen but forgot. Couldn't even remember his prayer. I'm excuse me. Couldn't even remember his dream. And Daniel, a man of prayer reveals to Nebuchadnezzar his dream when none of the witches, none of the sorcerers, the Chaldeans, none of them could do it. But the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob revealed this to Daniel. And showed this to Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar's dream that he had was revealed by Daniel through Yahweh Almighty that set Nebuchadnezzar up. And Nebuchadnezzar, some of his dream it would happen in B.C. and it would also happen in A.D. When you start talking about a coming, there's not but one coming. When you start talking about a coming, there's not but one that's going to come back. That is never Jesus, never Jesus, never Jesus. Never Yeshua, never Yehoshua. But it's Yahweh Himself is who's coming back. And when that one comes back, then He's going to destroy that spirit of anti. Messiah spirit. That anti-Messiah spirit has a mouth that will speak great things in this end time against the God of gods who was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Why is it that the church today is not teaching the true plan of salvation 
through the name of Yahweh is because of an anti-Mashiach spirit. This anti-Mashiach spirit goes back to B.C. John in A.D. talks about this anti-Messiah spirit. So here in the book of Thessalonians 2, the second chapter, or second Thessalonians, the second chapter. Keep this in mind, what we're talking about. Keep this in mind with Daniel when it shows the prince of princes. Keep up with this. Study this for yourself. Keep up with that coming. There's not but one coming. And the prophets foreseen this. I said the prophets foreseen this. Second Thessalonians 2 Thessalonians 2.1 says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by... The coming of our, the King James is going to say the Lord Jesus Christ, which is totally impossible for the early assembly to have ever known this. So the one that's coming back is actually going to be Adonai Yahweh Mashiach, and by our gathering together unto him. We're going to go back over to the book of Daniel again, 825. And then we're going back to the book of Second Thessalonians. And we may read Matthew 24, 3 real quick here in just a few minutes. What we're talking about is in Daniel's prophecies of the second chapter that Yahweh had given Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel interpreted it in the book of Daniel in the second chapter. Also in the seventh chapter of Daniel and also in the eighth chapter of Daniel. There are prophecies that Yahweh showed to Nebuchadnezzar And Daniel interpreted them in the second chapter. But the other two, Yahweh had given to Daniel. Of course, as you go to the 11th chapter and 12th chapter of the book of Daniel, and also the 9th chapter of the book of Daniel, that Yahweh had given to Daniel. But here in the book of Daniel, when you start looking at all of this, it shows the coming. A lot of people today do not understand there's not but one coming. And the one that's coming back is Yahweh alone. There's not going to be no Jesus coming back for as a name. We know the Messiah is coming back. And they have taken the true Messiah who the early assembly knew and have given him a different name than what he originally had. The true name of the true Mashiach was only one name. You have to understand who the Father is to understand who the Son is. And where all of this confusion come in, when you go back and you start doing some studying, first, if you stayed with what is from Genesis to Malachi, you would only have 
one name, both for the Father and Son. The prophets gave witness to only one name. Remember, the prophets gave witness to a coming. There's not but one name that is used in those comings. The prophets did not. Give no testimony of Jesus, 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 Yeshua, Yehoshua, Yahoshua. Far as names coming back, such as you'll find the word Yeshua, you'll find the word Yehoshua. Of course, the King James will use the word Joshua. But these never were. The names of the Son of the Creator of heaven and earth, the Son of God. The true name of the Creator of heaven and earth was Yahweh only. If you go study who Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob served, then you'll find out What name the Messiah come in? It's really just that plain and simple. We have been taught lies, inherited lies, through teachings. If you are a oneness person, your whole oneness doctrine has Come against Trinitarian doctrine for years. If you would only search out and understand that oneness, oneness, true apostolic oneness, never taught, never, never, never taught. any other name and for it to line up to true to real true apostolic oneness it would only be with one name so if you're going to accept all these names then you need to accept Trinitarian doctrine in because that's where all of this is tied into But the true apostolic church taught by the apostles never used any other name other than the name of Yahweh. And you can read your King James Bible in the New Testament and understand this by understanding the Old Testament and the quotations that's in the new, that was from the old, will give witness to one true name. Daniel 8.25 says, And through his policy also he shall cause craftness to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many, and he shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. Once you understand who this one that magnifies himself in his heart, this is the anti-Mashiach, the one that's going to be destroyed and destroy by peace and be destroyed by the Prince of Peace. Now, over in the book of Matthew, 
24.3 talks about. And he sat upon the Mount of Olives. Now he had already had a conversation about the temple. And the prior verses to this. But we're just going to read this here now. The disciples came unto him privately saying. Tell us. When shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? It's a Hebrew word. The word for end of the world is a Hebrew word called Ketz Ha'olam. And of course we talked about this a little bit in the broadcast before this so we understand that the coming and the end of the world is two different things now this world is set up and operates under a government right now that is actually anti-Mashiach and as the time goes on that we're living in This thing's going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. There will be, before the coming of Yahweh Almighty, there will be an anti-Mashiach somewhere come out, most likely, from the Middle East that's going to come out. Now, he, when he comes out, now he's not going to jump out and say, hey, look, world, I am the anti-Mashiach. He's not going to do this until the middle of Daniel's 70th week. But the revealing of him is not going to be until the middle of Daniel's 70th week. In other words, the last week in Daniel's prophecy, which is going to be in the middle of that prophecy, is when he's going to reveal himself. So we're talking about a coming now. We're talking about a coming here. We're talking about the coming of the true Mashiach who was virgin born who walked on the face of this earth nearly 2,000 years ago walked among men and was crucified according to Isaiah at the end of Isaiah 52 where he talks about, Behold my servant. And also in the book of Isaiah 53, Who have believed our report. Read all of that and you'll see who Isaiah was prophesying about. Isaiah is the same one that prophesied about John the Baptist forerunning Yahweh, not Jesus but Yahweh. So the true Mashiach had to be born in this earth, crucified, took his death, burial, and resurrection, his crucifixion. He was taken up among them around the 40th day, according to the book of Acts. And the same Yahweh that was taken up from them would come back in like manner. And we're talking about a coming. In the book of 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, verse 1. Now this is really, really interesting. Because of Apostle Paul in his time. In Paul's time. When this was written, in Paul's time, when all of this was taking place, when you go and 
search out and examine Thessalonians. You're going to find out that the book of I'm trying to find it here exactly. Uh Second Thessalonians, First Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians was written roughly between fifty and fifty four AD. The first Thessalonians and the second Thessalonians somewhere thereabout, give or take, somewhere about, about uh, thereabout. So we understand that when Apostle Paul had wrote this. And this is what he was saying in his time. Now we understand that in the first chapter, or the first Thessalonians, that he talked about a coming. But here in 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our... And we talked about this in the last broadcast where it says, Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. First of all, it's impossible. Your King James, your original 1611 King James Bible wouldn't even back up the 1769 edition King James Bible that you have right now that I'm reading out of. I'm reading out of a red letter edition King James Bible which is which was written roughly around 1769 and it uses Jesus in here in the original 1611 King James Bible uses the word I E S U S Jesus now you're talking about two different names spelt two different ways. So, when you even go back now from where I-E-S-U-S was translated from, it goes back to a Greek. I-E-S-O-U-S known as Iesus. In the Greek. Now, here it is that now, what I'm talking about. You, have, you would have three different translations using three different names. So then, the name of Jesus is just not old enough. It doesn't even go back to the 1611. The 1611 does not even go back to the Greek. Then, once you go back to the Greek Iesus, it doesn't line up from Genesis to Malachi with the same name the prophets gave witness to. So, you have to understand who the prophets prophesied about coming back. Very, it's really simple because if you go to I'm going to stop right here real quick. I want to go over and, and just establish something for what the Word says. Who is coming back. In the book of Zechariah. I said in the book of Zechariah now. look, Watch this here in the book of Zechariah. We're going to find that the book of Zechariah, which is in the 14th chapter. Verse 1. Let's see what Zechariah says, who's coming back. And I'm reading again from a red letter edition, King James Bible. 14.1 says, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, 
and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. Now look up the word Lord, L-O-R-D, capital letters. You're going to see it's a Hebrew word that actually, actually the word L-O-R-D is a cover-up. It's hiding something. It's because of the translations that has come down. Why would they hide the name of the one that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob served? Why would they hide the name of the one that that Messiah, the name that he come in? Why would they hide the name that the early assembly gave witness to for the plan of salvation? Zechariah shows in Hebrew from where the King James Bible was translated from the name of Yahweh right here in L-O-R-D. And this is a coming. And if we kept continue reading, it would prove who this is. But I want to go back over to Thessalonians real quick because we'll cover all this. But here, in the book of Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, let me get over here, 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, and, I'm, and, and ver, verse 1 again, I'm going to read this again, because if I stay with what the prophet and the prophets have given witness to who's coming back by name would be Yahweh. It's just that simple. But the church today has taken on an anti-Mashiach doctrine that says God has many names. And a name looks like to the church today really doesn't matter. And I'm even talking about oneness people. That does a name really even truly matter today? Evidently it doesn't. I said evidently it doesn't. Because the name that the early assembly was given to in the beginning was the name of Yahweh. In your King James Bible proves this in the New Testament. That where the first plan of salvation was given from. And it talked about Joel. But let me go on and read this because when you start reading Joel's prophecy, then you're going to start talking about the coming again. But here in 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Adonai Yahweh Mashiach. The word Adonai is a Hebrew word that can be translated into English as the word Lord and also the word Master. So I just read this the way it would actually be in Hebrew. Actually, in Hebrew, it would read Adonai Nu, meaning the God, the Lord of us. If you translate from King James, matter of fact, King James translates this way, where it says our Lord. In Hebrew, then, the word would be Adonai Nu, which means, translates, our Lord, Yahweh HaMashiach, and by our gathering together unto Him, gathering together unto Him when? At His coming. I said, at His coming. That's what Paul is talking about here. Our gathering together at or by 
the coming of Adonai Yahweh Mashiach and by our gathering together unto him. When is the gathering gather go be? When he comes back for his assembly. And a people that are going to be called by his name. Now, first of all, let me explain something here. You know, I'm not judging those that's gone. If they walked in all that they knowed, and that's all they knew, then all I can say, they'll stand before a merciful creator. And I'm not in no way, shape, form, or fashion or throwing no kind of judgment that way. But when a generation has truth revealed to it, then that generation, that time, is going to be held responsible for that truth. So I'm talking to people that's living right now, that's listening to this broadcast right now, that has ears to hear. Now I understand that this right here will come against your denominations, your organizations, come against ministries. But the truth is going to stand. There's not a oneness, apostolic church, nowhere, nowhere, that baptizes in Jesus' name, Acts 2.38, can back up that the original Acts 2.38 was baptized in Jesus' name. It's impossible. We'll give you an address, telephone number. At the end of the broadcast, you're more than welcome to call us. In the second verse of 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter. Now, remember, we're talking about a coming. And our time just about has come to an end here on this broadcast. But it says, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Mashiach is at hand. And it's talking about the coming of Mashiach. Now remember, we've been talking about this coming, and part of this coming, or part of the coming, the coming was in part of the visions of Daniel and the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had. And we're going to start again in the second chapter and verse 1. We've been talking about a coming. And we've been going to the book of Daniel And going through it for several, several, several weeks. And I believe that a lot of, we have been taught so much stuff that we really don't even know who's coming back. We have one name in the New Testament that's coming back. Then when you go to the Old Testament and examine that coming, it's a different name that would be in the Old. Now, this may be the first time that you've ever tuned into this program. And if it is, you're going to hear that we use and teach only the true name of the creator of heaven and earth that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob called on. 
Noah called on before the flood and after the flood. So, what we're in the process of doing is understanding a coming. Now, we understand also that if you go over to the Old Testament and you start looking at prophecy, I said, you start looking at prophecy and examine prophecy. You're going to find that prophecy only gave witness to one name and it was never Jesus. Now, I understand that if this is the first time you've tuned into this program, that can be a shocker to you. And this is why we have literature that was sent out. So, if you don't understand what we're saying, make it real simple. In your Bible, from in your Bible, using a red letter edition King James Bible, in the Old Testament, you can find the word Lord, L-O-R-D, capital letters, God, G-O-D, capital letters, and the word Jehovah used seven times. All these are cover-ups. When you go back from where the original King James Bible was translated from, from where the King James Bible known as the Red Letter Edition, known as the 1769 edition that we're using, which actually come from the 1611 King James Bible. These are cover-ups. The true name should be there. The name of Jesus is not even in the original 1611 King James Bible. I-E-S-U-S is. Then again, you have to start backtracking and studying. But your Bible will back up everything that we're saying. Because all we're saying is what your Bible's saying. Why is it that you would have one name of the one coming back in the Old Testament and then in the New Testament it's talking about a coming and you've got a different name. It's because of an anti-Mashiach spirit that has actually got a hope to the church. And I know that sounds very strange, but still, when you start studying you'll find that true oneness, apostolic, true apostolic oneness, only taught one true name. Not two or three names that you're being taught. You're being taught by people that majority have been told what to say, what to believe. And without studying, it's like a mocking bird. They're just mocking what they heard. Without studying. So it's really important to understand this. Because when you start examining this, and you really start going back over to the book of Daniel and start examining it and understanding that there was one true creator and that the prophecies of of Daniel and also the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had Part of those dreams and and visions would happen in B.C. and the latter part of them would happen in A.D. even ahead of us now. That would 
be when the coming of Yahweh would take place. So this is the purpose that we're what we're wanting to do is examine the coming. Examine the coming. Look at the coming. We're always talking about that Mashiach having the name of Jesus, but you won't find it. You will not find that Messiah coming back in the name of Jesus. The reason why is because the prophets gave witness to only one name. And it was consistent in the scripture. It quit being consistent by 325 A.D. when they started baptizing in titles Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They turned the oneness into a triune three God message is what they did in the be- in by 325 A.D. It didn't just happen in 325 A.D. It had already been worked on and started being worked on roughly in roughly probably the latter part of the 100 A.D. So we need to learn to stay with what the prophets have given witness to. Not what a denomination organization because all you're having today is the teachings of men that are making the word of Yahweh none effect. Your Savior never was the name of Jesus. No more than it was ever Jesus. Neither was it ever Jesus. Neither was it Yeshua, Yahshua, Yahoshua. Even though the word Yeshua and Yehoshua is in Scripture, but it was never the Son of God, if you want to say it that way, the Son of God's true name. You have to understand the Father's name to understand the Son's. So, what we've been talking about was in Daniel, in 8.25, talks about the Prince of Princes. If you go to 8.25, you're going to find out that it's actually talking about the anti-Mashiach is going to stand up against the Prince of Princes and he's going to be broken without hand. That prince of princes is the Mashiach when he comes back. And he's going to be destroyed. Right here in the book of Second Thessalonians. The second chapter. In verse 2. Or excuse me, verse 1. Chapter, 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 1. We had read, we had been reading this, but we're going to start over again. It says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm reading how King James says now. And by our gathering together unto him. Well, if the name of Jesus never would even fit and go back to the original 16, then what was in the original 16 was it even what was in the Greek. And then what was in the Greek never was what was even in the Hebrew. So you've got to have a foundation for something. 
And when you start talking about a coming, a coming, you can go to the prophets and see this coming. And it gives the name of the one that is to come. And he says, the coming of, as the King James says, Lord Jesus Christ, and by will gather and gather unto him. Now, I want to understand what the prophets are giving witness to. And why is it that we have a name here in the King James Bible that's less and pushing it to be 300 years old? And really... Truthfully, less than 250. And at the time that this was written by the Apostle Paul, Paul is given witness of a coming and he understands that coming from the prophets though. All of the epistles and everything that is a writing of a New Testament. In the beginning, you had no writing of no New Testament, period. You had the blood that was shed. But the only writing that the early assembly had was the Scripture. Even the Messiah gives witness to this in St. John 5.39 when he says, Search the Scripture. His blood had not even been shed to bring in a New Testament. And there was not even a writing of a New Testament until some years after the day of Pentecost, what we have record in the book of Acts. Real quick, I want to go over to the book of Zechariah because I believe you have to establish something. And the whole purpose is this, because of what Paul is going to be saying in this verse and what Paul is going to be talking about. It's going to be very, very important for us to understand about this coming. Because what we're reading now is fixing to match up perfect with what is in the Scripture. When I'm talking about Scripture, I'm talking about from Genesis to Malachi. The word for Scripture is a Hebrew word called kit vei. It's a word for Scripture. And the word Hakodash is the word for holy. So the word is called Kitve Hakodash, means a holy scriptures. Okay. Now in Zechariah, going over to the Old Testament, the book of Zechariah, in the fourteenth chapter. Zechariah fixing to give you a witness of the one coming back. Zechariah 14 1 says, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. Look at the word. Lord in capital letters. And you're going to see the true name of Yahweh is there in Zechariah. Now I'm going to read part of this. And as we go, we're going to probably jump back and forth to Zechariah. The 
going back to the book of Second Thessalonians. Let's read Second Thessalonians again. Second Thessalonians two one says, "Now I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our." That's going to change all the whole picture, because the prophet has given witness of Yahweh coming back. The King James will say, "Lord Jesus Christ." Sometimes I really don't like getting into this because we're on the radio. And you want to make things really simple. On things. But you can study what we're saying. When you look up the word Lord. In the Hebrew. Here it is translated as the Hebrew word known as Adonainu. The word Adonainu means our master. That's how you could translate it from Hebrew to English. You can translate it our Lord. If you want to say it that way as the King James does. Because actually, the word Lord here has nothing to do with a name per se. This is only giving you a a title of something. He's a master. Then it goes on and it says, King James would say, Jesus Christ is impossible. Because you don't have no witness and no prophet given this. So what you would have is Yahweh Mashiach. The word Mashiach is the word in the Hebrew as the word meaning anointed. Or you will hear the word Messiah. Of course they use the word Christ here. Now, when you go getting technical on this, why is it in the book of Daniel? I want to go over there real quick. In the book of Daniel, in the ninth chapter of Daniel, In the 25th verse of Daniel. Now remember, we were just talking about the, where it talks about Christ in the King James Bible. Where it talks about Christ. Now let's go over to the book of Daniel. Here in the book of Daniel, you will find where it says, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks, and the street shall be built again, and the wall even in troublous times. What I'm going to point out on this right now, we're going to deal with all this in the future, but I'm going to point out the word Messiah here in the book of Daniel 725. 725 uses the word Messiah, M E S S I A H. Now, this 
is really a a shocking thing because first of all, if you look up the word Messiah here in Hebrew, M E S S I A H in Daniel nine twenty five. Matter of fact it's used twice. The word Messiah is used in Daniel nine twenty five and also Daniel nine twenty six. These are not names. This is not his name. This is the word for anointing. Matter of fact if you look up the word Messiah, you're going to find that it takes you to a Hebrew word called Mashiach. What it means is anointed or anointed one is what this is. You find this twice in Daniel 9.25 and 9.26. Then, when you go over to the book of St. John, go over to the book of St. John real quick, 141, we find in the New Testament, reading the King James Bible again, it says, this is St. John 141, he first findeth his own brother Simon. And said unto him, or saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. Now, when you see this word here, Messiah, spelt M E S S I A S. But then it says, being interpreted, Christ. Neither one, neither is this a name. All this here is, is the word. Matter of fact, if you take your King James Bible and go to the word in St. John 141, and it's also used in St. John 4.25. This word, Messiah. When you go look up this word in St. John 141, it's going to take you to the word anointed. And you know what it says? It talks about it, and then it goes on and gives you the Hebrew origin of the word. Which takes you to the word Mashiach. This is what a Strong's Concordance will do. If you use a Strong's Concordance. But the Greek is going to call it. The word Christos, spelled C-H-R-I-S-T-O-S. Now, none of these are names. All this is talking about is anointed. But we have four places. Four places where you find the word Messiah, or in two places, would be Messiah. Just spelled a little different. But then when you go over, and you're going to find the word Christ all the way through your King James Bible, as far as in the New Testament. Which is really the closest? We're not talking about a name now. This is why you'll hear us say, like here in Second Thessalonians 2, 1 says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of... If I wanted to say Adonai, I could use the word Lord. I could use the word Master. In our, in our King James Bible, if I wanted to. Because the same word can be used where you see the word L-O-R-D, Lord, can be used word Master also. 
the master Yahweh Mashiach, or as the King James would ought to be reading, would be the master Adonai Yahweh Mashiach, or the word Lord, of course, is what they've got, but it ought to be as Yahweh HaMashiach, or Yahweh Messiah. Either way, the name where Jesus is at should have really never been there. This is talking about a coming. The mailing address for Yahweh Ministries is 775 McDonald Road, Covington, Georgia, 30014, USA. 775 McDonald Road, Covington, Georgia, 30014, USA. Be sure and ask about the Father's Name CD and the free literature. Phone 770-784-0703, 770-784-0703. Our website is yahwaministries.org. That's y-a-h-w-a-h hyphen ministries dot o-r-g. y-a-h-w-a-h hyphen ministries dot o-r-g. Until next time, we bid you shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom.